I'm going to show you how to install this ignition system. Very, very simple. As you can see, we have the major components there, the distributor, coil, and ignition module. In the foreground here, we have the power connection and the ground connection. We have our coil connection here. And we have our good old-fashioned distributor connection here with breaker points. Here's the same setup, only now I've replaced the distributor with electronic pickup. In this case, we're using a signal generator to mimic the distributor. So when I turn this knob, it's like hitting the gas. It's like spinning your distributor. Here you can see the distributor signal that's actually coming from the signal generator. When I increase the speed on the signal generator, you can see that signal change. So we're showing here that the ignition module can work on just good old-fashioned breaker points or it can work with electronic triggering like directly off a TTL signal from this signal generator or from an MCU. The wiring is very simple but it must be precise. In that I mean that the negative side of the ignition coil must ground to the same point as the ignition module which is on the engine itself. So we have a short spark path for the spark energy. I'm going to activate the system now. You can see it operating. Now I've replaced the ignition coil with a remote ignition coil that's mounted on our test rig for safety's sake. You can see here the setup is very very simple. Power and ground, coil and signal. Doesn't get any easier than that. Now we're watching a module in action. The green light on your left is a signal that tells you the unit's getting power and that the MCU is up and ready to work. The red light is a strobe. That shows you the output of the unit. Now when I change the speed, you can see that the light changes. When I increase it, it gets brighter. If I go to a slow speed, if I go slow enough, you can actually see the spark, individual spark uh, events in that strobe light. So that strobe light tells you if you're getting a good signal, if it's triggering properly. Underneath the ignition module are self-resetting fuses. They're located here, here, and here. Also here. Those are power protectors. It's sort of like a fuse that will trip when it gets hot, but then reset automatically when it cools down. So in case anything happens in the wiring in the car, any kind of external failure, rather than any damage being done to the ignition module, these units will trip and protect the module so it doesn't uh, fail, and that uh, will come back on and work as soon as you clear the uh, wiring fault. Any other type of uh, engine electronics, if you short out the wires, uh, the unit's dead. It's never coming back. And here you can see how I reversed the power and ground leads. Normally any other electronic device on your car, if you did this, turn on the power, it's bye-bye. You let the smoke out and that's it. Not with this unit. It will self-reset. Okay, I've got that set up properly again. And no, it does not work on negative voltage. So uh, you guys in the UK, sorry. So suppose you don't have breaker points or electronic pickup or computer triggering. You have a magnetic pulse type distributor like this one. No problem. It plugs right into the unit here. Very easy to do. Reliable connection. For a tachometer connection, we have another connector for that. It's right here. Plugs right in. And there's your tachometer connection. Will work with just about any Porsche or European tachometer. When it comes to programming, there are two options. First, you can use a laptop or any device with a USB port and plug in using our USB adapter. And that will plug right into the ignition module itself. So it plugs in there, this end, 
and then plugs in over here at your computer USB port on the other end. So the Bluetooth connection is very easy. Again, it just plugs right into the part. There's a connector right there. The harness is designed to look like an old school ground cable. So when you run this in the car, nobody knows it's really there. And when you turn on power to the unit, you'll see a little light flash there on the Bluetooth device that's ready to connect. So you can connect to your device 300 feet away uh, at the racetrack or in the dyno room uh, and make your changes using a free app that you download for your tablet. And there's the keyboard right there. Very simple, free interface. If you have a more complex car, like maybe a Porsche 917, this uh, system comes equipped with the ability to use an external wiring hub. You can see it plugs right into that same port that we used there on the left before. And it is again a wire that is encased in what looks like a ground cable. And that goes to our expansion module, plugs right in there. When we power up, you can see a power indicator lamp in the expansion module, the wiring hub there. You can also see the green light flashing on the module. So the power is going into the module and then through this dedicated connector or communications line, it goes to our wiring hub. And that's where we're gonna connect all of our accessories. This way we're not running all that messy wiring into the engine compartment. Remember, we're keeping this engine compartment very simple and original. Remember, just power and ground, and coil wire, trigger wire. So now I'm going to hook up this distributor to the hub. And I'm using this part right here. Uh, it's a plug where you basically just strip the ends of the wire, push down the appropriate tab, shove the wire in there, release the tab, and the connection is done. It's uh, going to last a long time. It's resistant to corrosion, stainless steel interior parts. Um, this is a new kind of industry standard connection. And what's really nice about it, you can make your connections um, external of the module and then simply plug it in like so. See it plugged into the distributor and you can see clearly where the wires go. It says distributor input and ground. So there's our signal reference ground for our distributor and there's the A signal wire going into the green port where it says distributor input. Now there's also lots of other inputs and outputs here uh, and I'm going to show you that how to use the RPM switch. Here's a simple demonstra demonstration of how we can use this module. Uh, here I've got a light rigged up uh, and that will be our RPM shift light. Got a yellow wire, that's for an alternate trigger input, and a white wire, that's for a special tachometer output. And there's a resistor across power and a tach output. That's there so that you can impedance match to any type of special tachometer you can do with this particular part by just simply changing that resistor. Okay, now I'm going to demonstrate the shift light function. Bear in mind, this is an RPM switch, so it can be used for any number of things. There's a common, normally open, and normally closed connections that are software controlled via the programming system. So right now I have this programmed for 10,000 RPM in a six cylinder engine with the shift light set at 9,000 RPM. So when I power on, watch the bulb. It made a flash. That tells you that the system is up and, up and functional. It's like a self-test. Every time you turn the race car on, you're going to see that light flash. You know that the shift light is working. So now, here's my test rig. You can see my generator and my scope. And I'm going to increase the, the speed now. The blue line is the tack output. And right here where I hit the right frequency, which is 450 hertz, 9,000 RPM in a six cylinder, 
you can see that the shift light has come on. If I back out, it goes out. Now where I'm getting close, it'll start flickering. So it'll tell you that it's about to go off until you hit it hard and then it comes on. Now if you keep going, you're going to hit the RPM limit. And that's set at 10,000. So there, it starts dropping out pulses. When it, right there at 500 cycles. So 3% over that, it's going to go flat dead. Like if you had missed the shift, the ignition goes flat dead. But it'll come back on gradually and then full so that you don't cause damage to the motor. Here's how we configure the system for race cars. We have our module here, the wiring hub. It's located in the cockpit someplace, usually close to all the other electronics and fuse boxes. So it is uh, able to be put out in the weather, but we recommend that you put it under the dash somewhere just to keep all the wiring together. So this is where you're going to make all your connections. Uh, in this case, I'm going to simulate a computer-controlled triggering system that's going to trigger the module through the expansion unit here. So that, of course, has that long wire that goes over to the engine compartment where the ignition module is. Now, in mid-engine cars like we're racing now, this Bluetooth module is carried further toward the back of the car uh, near a vent output uh, where it can communicate freely with the outside world. The really nice thing about using the Bluetooth module at the races is that it gives you the ability to fine-tune the engine in the hot pits so it saves time instead of the driver having to pull off of the track pull into the pits look around for a chip to change for the RPM or shift light or something like that then getting back into the car and getting back out there or wasting all that time we can do that in the hot pits all a guy's got to do is pull over and stop uh, of course he's not allowed out of the car in the hot pits so the mechanic being within range can then uh, talk to the driver and say uh, okay what do you want me to do change the RPM limit the shift light what have you do those changes uh, guy restarts the car and he's back on the track immediately so it saves all that time uh, the other thing that we do is that we save our programs for every different track that we go to and we start building libraries for different weather conditions and for different drivers so we have a library if a particular driver or say a novice driver is going to be in in the car we'll have a special program for him uh, if we have our expert driver in the car and it's raining out we got a special program for him if we're at uh, say um, a particular track in the in the uh, east here where the car can actually go airborne at times we've got a program for that okay I'm going to talk to you about the security features of the system. Now if you look at the device, the Bluetooth device itself, it's got a Mac ID number and a device ID number. You can see the flashing light it says connected. Okay, when that light is flashing it's ready to be paired to. So now we're gonna pair to it. So we go to our application, go to Bluetooth management, then we go connect to and select we're going to scan and sure enough we'll see the same device ID number that we saw on the device is appeared here so we just we know which device is which now there could be many of them here so you select this particular one say connect okay now it's going to connect if it was a first time pairing it asks you if you want to use a, a software passcode just click on yes okay now that we're into the system I'm going to access the code uh, if I hit question mark enter it tells me what functions can be set and how to set them if I hit the letter D and enter it's going to give me my it's going to display my current settings okay so I can go back in here and change those settings any way I want now to program this to do these changes there can be no signal coming into the ignition module that's called a hardware interrupt so that if a signal is present you cannot access the system 
if you're smart enough, you might be able to pair to the Bluetooth device, but you won't be able to change anything. So to change anything in this, you have to have the key to the car. So you turn the key to the odd position, but don't start the engine. Enters this mode, you connect, you can see the connect light is on. The data light will flash when it's transmitting repeat and uh, receiving data from your Bluetooth device. So now you can, you can do any kind of changes you want. So on the track, of course, when you pull off the track, you turn off the key, the system powers down, and of course you can't program it. When you go to start the car, as soon as you hit uh, start the engine, it locks out the programming. So there's no way anybody can el nobody else can get into your system and change anything. Uh, and there can't be any confusion with other people's Bluetooth devices.